Next thing to do is install the bracket for our CPU cooler. Because we've got an LGA1700 socket, we want to have all these little pins pulled towards their outer space even on each corner. And then it's just a matter of lining the bracket up with the motherboard. Then we've got one of these standoffs to screw onto each corner. We're now ready to start working the I.O. So I'm going to set the fans onto the radiator. Now importantly, this is going to be the back and this is why the cables are coming out this end. Then I'm going to use these long radiator screws to secure the fans to the radiator. Coming from each of our fans, we've got two cables. The first is this four pin PWM connector and as this include this three to one triple splitter cable with the I.O. So all we need to do is plug one of the fans into each port on this triple splitter cable. And that's just going to leave us one four pin PWM connector to plug into our CPU fan header. The other cable coming from each of the fans is a 3 pin 5 volt ARGB connector and as this include this 4 to 1 ARGB splitter cable. So all we need to do is line each of the cables up with the splitter cable and plug them in. And then we're going to plug this end of the cable into one of the ARGB headers on our motherboard and if we look at the cable we've got one spare ARGB header on it if we want to plug an additional device into it. Looking at the cables coming from our pump, we've got this 4-pin PWM connector which we're going to plug into our pump header on the motherboard and we've got this USB cable which we're going to plug into USB 2.0 header on the motherboard. So we can set our case's top fan bracket onto the I.O. and then we're going to use these shorter radiator screws to secure the radiator to the fan bracket. We can then set our I.O. into place at the top of the case. So I'm just going to pass the tubes into the case and I'm going to set the I.O. loosely up at the top here and feed all the cables coming from the fans through to the back. I'm then just going to flatten down our 8-pin EPS cable because they may well catch on the radiator coming in. And then I'm just going to lower the radiator down on this side here, pulling the cables through as I go. And try and get the notches in on this side. And once I'm happy the notches are in, we can then flatten the radiator down into place. Then we can reattach the radiator bracket with the two screws we removed earlier on. We're now ready to install our AIO, so we need to remove the plastic protection from the pump. And you'll notice we've got thermal paste pre-applied. Now what is important, if we turn the AIO round, you'll notice the tubes here are down at the bottom. And all the standard effects that come up in the AIO start with the tubes at the bottom. And when I installed this in my last build, I had real trouble trying to actually invert the display on the screen. I'm sure there is a way of doing it, and hopefully we'll have more luck with it today. But the easiest thing is to have the tubes at the bottom, so all the standard effects are going to be the right way up without needing to turn the screen round. So just before I run this up to the top, I do want these cables running up to the top of the motherboard. So I'm just going to put them round the side of the bracket here, where the cables are going to keep them nice and tidy and out of the way. And then all I'm going to do is line this up with the bracket we installed earlier on. Then we need to put a thumb screw onto each corner, and importantly it is the thumb screws with a little lip in the middle. And then I'm just checking my cables are nice and free, which they are. Our pump header is this header at the top of the motherboard, so I'm going to plug it into place. And then we'll push the excess cable through to the back. And as well, I'm just going to put our USB cables through to the back as well. Our CPU fan header is this one next to the pump header. So I'm going to bring the cable coming from the fans on the radiator through the cutout, line it up with the header, push into place, and then pull the excess cable through to the back. Our AIO has some plastic protection we can remove. We've got a USB 2.0 header down here. So I'm going to bring the USB cable coming from our pump down to the bottom line it up and push into place and then pull the excess cable through to the back. We've got two RGB headers down at the bottom of the motherboard so I'm going to bring the RGB cable coming from the fans on the radiator through, line it up with the header and push into place and again pull the excess cable through to the back. So we'll go up to here and click on device. We're able to select our AIO from here. And we'll click on cancel.
and you can see the effect that it is being applied on the IO at the moment. So we've got a range of different effects that we can choose. Um, I've already used this before and the ice one I think is going to look well in this all white device. So we're just going to click on apply. And you'll notice the display in the IO has now changed to one that's going to work very well for our all white theme. The other thing that you can do is show the hardware info. So we can click here. So what we can do is pick up to three of these that we want to display. So let's go for the CPU frequency, the CPU temperature, and we'll have the GPU temperature, and then we'll click on apply. And then if you take a look at our IO, you'll notice the frequency of the CPU is currently being displayed. It's now going to cycle over to the CPU temperature and then over to the GPU temperature as well. 